record. All right, well, <laughs> there we go. Hi, my name is Bill Calhoun. I'm a high school physics teacher, and I'm also a second year student and in UC Denver's ILT master's program here. And, um, and I'm doing this on Smart Notebook, and, um, and you can see that one of the things I'm doing is I'm clicking on things and making them come in. So for instance, um, I want to say that I use Smart Notebook with my students every day as part of providing notes and diagrams. And also, you can overlay Smart Notebook onto other files, PDF files, images, videos, and so you can use it as a, as a markup tool um, for that as well. And um, there we are, that's a markup on a, on a picture I took in my class. We taped vectors onto a student. <laughs> Someone decided to call him a vector man. I want to focus on two tasks today. Um, one is the task of creating notes um, and just basic creation of notes. But the more important one that I want to focus on is the presenting of notes because I found that my students, um, when they are taking notes and, and writing them down, um, copying them from the board, between reading what's on the board and writing what's on their notebook, um, if I try to speak to them while they're doing that, um, it's terribly distracting and they completely ignore me and keep taking their notes. So I've found different ways to use the program to present the notes in bits and pieces that I can control so that um, the, uh, um, I, you know, I can get them to stop with the notes and I can make a point and do whatever and then we can continue and I have a little more control over that process. Um, I want to look at three tools for each of these, these tasks that I have. Um, last couple of notes here. Um, where do you download Smart Notebook? Whee! Um, this, by the way, is a clickable link. And, um, of course, you can't click on it right now because this is my desktop. But um, what I want to say is that I'm going to take all the documents for this webinar, I'm gonna put them in Google Drive, in a folder in Google Drive, I'm gonna make all these documents available for you. If you have Smart Notebook and you, um, um, I mean, if you want to download Smart Notebook, um, you can um, click on this link and get a copy of it for, say, for your, um, your home machine and, uh, and carry on that way. Um, let's see, I want to now, um, I want to ask you guys a couple of questions. So I'm going to open this. And let's see, again, um, if you go to the green bar on top, one of your options should be to fit this to your, um, to fit this to your, uh, to your window. All right. And I'm going to make mine a little bit larger for me to see. And there's a zoom option on this, and I'm going to go to here. Um, I have four questions here. If your answer is yes to any of these questions, um, I would like you to annotate a little check mark underneath there. Um, so the way to do this, if you move the mouse and look for the green bar and you see where it says options, one of your options is to annotate. And an annotate bar comes up, and you have the option to draw to mark a little drawing tool. And then you can just make like a little check mark or a little X or a little dot or you know whatever you wanna do. We should all be able to see this coming up or at least that's what happened. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We've got one mark there. So see if you can try doing that with the annotation tool. There we go. And anyone else? Whee. Okay, wow. So really, are, are all of you smart notebook newbies? Oh, okay, someone uses a smart board. Okay, good. Um, all right, this is good to know. Wow, so people haven't used smart notebook. Um, and one of you is a teacher, okay. Oh, I see another mark up there for using the smart board regularly. <laughs> is that you, Ken? <laughs> um, and uh, great. Um, so now the reason why I'm asking some of these questions, I just wanted to know how familiar people are with, with um, 
using smart notebook. And I can see that people are not terribly. So the other thing is that I have a, um, let's see, I gotta get my, where is annotate? Aaron is asking me where annotate is. Um, if you go, you, if you're seeing my participant poll here, you should be able to scroll, um, move your mouse and find that green bar on the top and scroll to it. And a, a toolbar, should, well, actually, there should be a thing that says options, and you should be able to click on that little button to the right there that says options. And um, one of the options uh, should be to annotate, and a little bar should come up. Yeah, to the right of the green bar at the top under options. Oh, and uh, yeah, you know, if you're on a Mac, maybe it's different. Wow, that's an interesting point. Oh, Aaron, and you don't see to annotate. Okay. Yeah. But I, I, I would put a check mark under numbers <laughs> one and one, two, and four, <laughs> if I were able to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, the reason why I asked about um, if you have a lot of experience with PowerPoint um, is because I find that the tools on Smart Notebook are very similar to PowerPoint tools. Um, they're actually similar to other tools as well. And um, so, um, in fact, they're even not as elaborate as PowerPoint tools. So that's, um, so it's, it's, in some ways it's a lot easier. Let me um, show you what some of these tools are. So I want to take a look at, um, and let's see, let's do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna open up a new window. Oh, I see the annotations are still there. Okay. Um, where's my smart notebook? Here it is. Now, I think there should be something that allows me to, here we go, clear. I can clear everybody's drawings on here. There we go, that's what I wanted, okay. Um, so, smart notebook is a whiteboard, basically. Um, and so you're presented with this blank screen. The, the three tools that I want to focus on, um, up here at the top is, there's a pen up here. And now there are also, sometimes tools are on the right, sometimes tools are along the top. Um, different versions of Smart Notebook work differently on different computers. Um, but the, the, um, the little icon is the same, there's a little pen there and it gives you a pen and it allows you to draw, okay? If you're standing at a smart board, you can just do this with your finger or you can grab one of the pens, there's usually a tray with a pen and you can grab one of those pens and you can, um, yeah, and by the way, if you use the annotate tools, it's actually very similar. Yeah, I saw Ken <laughs> did that um, and, and it's very similar. Um, so there's that. The other thing that you're going to make use of a lot is the text tool, which is this one that looks like a big A. And you type it in there and you say, whoops, like that, okay? And just like with PowerPoint or anything else like that, you can click the selector tool, you can grab these things, you can move them around, you can make different things happen, okay? Um, there is an eraser tool. There's a whole slew of different tools, tools for making lines, that sort of thing. There's another tool, and um, let's see. There we go. I'm gonna clear your little arrow, Ken. There's another- um, Yeah, sorry about that. I couldn't figure out how to erase it. <laughs> um, there's another tool, and and, on this machine that I'm using, I have to go here to a, a drop down here. There are these shapes. So you can click on a shape and it'll draw a shape like a square. All right. 
And then you can select that and move that around. Now, when you click on text or shape, you notice that there's a, um, a selection thing around it. And in the top right corner of the selection thing, there's a drop down menu that can tell you a lot of different things you can do, including properties. Um, there's a properties window. I'm going to move this over here. And the properties window does things like let you um, pick colors. Um, there's a fill color there. Um, and you know you can do different things with all that. This is something that's easy to explore. If you ever use PowerPoint or Photoshop or anything, all of these tools will make total sense to you. Um, there's one tool on here, though, that's really, really, really fun. And to do that, I'm going to minimize my, um, my smart notebook. And it is this tool here that looks like a camera. And it's called Screen Capture. And when you click on that, you get this separate window. And you can click on something and then scroll across your anywhere on your screen and you can grab a screen capture of anything you have on your screen and it becomes an image that you can move around and mess around with. So um, those, those are the three main things. There's the draw and text tool and there's the camera capture and then there's the shape drawing and I want to just draw your attention to those. Um, let's see. Does anybody have um, a um, smart notebook on their machine right now. Can I, can I see someone want to show me a hand? Does anybody have it on their machine at the moment? No? Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. Um, Aaron, I'm going to hand my screen over to you. All right? And when I do that, I'm going to, um, let's see, where am I here? I'm going to give my mouse and keyboard control to you, all right? So that's going to be for you, Aaron, and it's going to ask you if, um, if that's okay. Did you get a message? Uh, not yet. Okay. Let's see. I'll hit it again. Make sure that that'll work. Hmm. It should ask you. Are you on the Mac? Is that what? Well, the thing is, though, Joni said she's on a Mac and she has the annotate button. Um, so my green bar is up at the top. It says um, you're. It says that you're recording. It says that I'm muted. Yeah. And then right directly to the right, it says original size because I'm on full screen and yeah. exit full screen. And that's it. So I, I don't right. know if I have a setting that's not clicked that doesn't allow me to annotate with you guys. Um, I'll, I'll figure that out. Okay. <laughs> so I apologize. Maybe that's part of the problem. I know that there are different versions of um, Zoom. And like, for instance, when I was playing with it all this afternoon and doing things with it, it, it gave me the option to download a more recent version. Um, oh, maybe that's why. Because I had that option this morning. I just didn't have time to download it. Oh, right. hang on. Click to start remote control of the shared screen. Oh, try that. Oh, there you I go. I think I have it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, oh, there okay. you go. There you go. You're moving the little window around. There you go. That's nice. Oh, how cool. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that fun? Yeah. Um, so one of the things you could do, if you can move that away, like click on the high there, and you should be able to um, now double click in there, and you should be able to edit in there. There you go. <laughs> and then you just click outside that box and it'll, um, there you go, nice, cool. Well, that's fun. Um, <laughs> so why don't you give the control back to me? Okay, how do I do that? <laughs> um, if you go up again to the green bar to the top and mouse over the green bar, um, it should drop down and it should say something about remote control. Um, it, it, the green bar is now yellow and it says you are controlling Bill Calhoun's screen. Okay. And there but should I don't be, see a drop down menu. There should be a, a menu for dropping down and. Un hmm. 
Anyone else have any ideas? I think this is the same problem. Maybe I don't have the latest version. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I can stop it from my end as well. All right, so I'm gonna oh, stop okay. my, my remote control. And there we go. Does anyone else wanna try this? Ken, do you wanna try this? You wanna try the remote control? I just wanna use it. Here, I'll give it to you, Ken. See if you if that comes up. So I'm just waiting. Okay. All right. Hmm. I'm waiting for a mess. Yeah, it should come in. It should pop up. Not it seeing. Took a while. Yeah, I was doing all my practicing at my school today. My network is much better there at school than here. I can see this is all a lot slower. Anything? Okay. I click to start the remote control with the shared screen. Okay, so I click. And you should have control over my mouse now. Oh yeah. I so, might take another minute. Yeah, it says there we go. Okay. There we go. My screen. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then when you click, oh, yeah, okay. click outside, there is, and now you can grab it and just move that around if you want to. You can also resize it. You see that little dot on the bottom right of the selection box? There's a little round dot there on the lower right corner. Oh, it seems I've gained, regained control of the screen here. Um, I'm afraid that Kendra has frozen. I hope she's okay. <laughs> over there. Let's see if she's gonna let me know what's going on. Oh. All right, the, um, so this is how, these are the ways that you can create objects and move them around and manipulate them um, in this program. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the presenting of things. Um, and there are three main tools for presenting. Um, and this is um, the one that I use over and over and over again. Uh, if I click on the hi there, everyone, um, that we have here, um, I can right click on this box. Uh, no, I just click rather on that button up there. And there are properties here. There's another button over here on the right that's properties. There's a, like three different places where you can reach this. And one of the things you'll see is this thing that says object animations. Now again, this is something on PowerPoint that you see. Um, and the, um, the one I love is this fade in one. Now watch what happens. You see how it disappeared? And then you click on it and it comes in again. And so, um, when it disappears, and then it'll keep going like that. Um, if, I, if I go to a new page and then come back to this page, it'll be, it'll be blank again and I have to click on it. Um, so it's kind of a fun thing to do. And it's, um, my students, one of the things that happens when it is dim, it doesn't go completely white. It always leaves a little bit of a ghost there. And that little ghost, sometimes my students compete to see who can read the ghost before I, I make it come up. <laughs> so they're still trying to take notes rather than have me talk. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, it's the thing that I use probably more often than anything else as far as an animation. It helps me control um, exactly what I want up on the board. And I am going to show you some, some examples of this um, um, a bit later. The other thing that happens um, 
there is a thing called a screen. And the screen is literally a screen. You can control it up and down like this. You can move it from one side or from the other side. And in this way, again, I can control what the students are seeing on the board. It's a very, very simple little screen. And then um, the third thing is a trick. So there's a button for that screen and probably over here on the view menu, there's a, I don't know if it's the view one, one of these has another option. Again, there's usually two or three ways to get to something. Another one is to take a box like this. I'm going to enlarge it a little bit. And I'm going to click my properties over here. And I'm going to make this box be white. And I'm also going to make the color of the line around it be white. And what I have now, and it can be hard to find if you don't know that it's there, but I have this little box that I can use to cover up text that I don't want to be seen. And then I can slide the little box out of the way. So it becomes essentially a, a small version of the screen. And you can do this with different colors, different shapes, uh, just depending on what you have in mind. Um, and so this way, between this and the fading um, and um, and the, 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 um, the screen over here, you have all of these different ways to sort of control how the notes are being presented. And so those are the three main tools that I use for presenting. Um, so there's that. Um, again, um, let's see. Louisa, do you want to try? I can maybe give you a, a quick chance here to try the remote control. You want to try it? Sure. All right. There we go. Hmm. Trying to figure out. Yeah, I think you have to wait for, I just clicked an approve button. Okay. And so it should be coming in. Hmm. I can see, yeah, this uh, bi-coastal communication is. <laughs> Did you get a little notice yet? No, nope, nothing no. yet. Nothing yet. I can try it again. You know, I didn't factor any of that in, um, you know, wait for responses or waiting for the share screen um, off the back to that end of the time online. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I don't know. We, you disappeared from my view here. So I, I was wondering what happened to you. I'm trying to see if I can... Yeah, uh, uh... Oh, she's frozen up again. Louisa requesting remote control of your shared content. All right. Let's see if we can make this work. There we go. Louisa, you got my screen. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. So, so remember, there's a white box on the right here. The screen froze and I couldn't do anything, so I'm... And Louisa, the screen is up here where it says show hide screen shade. If you just want to click on that screen shade and see what happens to the, whoop. Well, let's see what happened here. <laughs> you know what you did? You made the screen, you made it um, be transparent. <laughs> So um, you notice it went, it went down to the bottom here, 
And so what I have to do is I have to undo the transparency. There we go. Now we're back. That's actually another, that's how I do the markup. So I'm glad you discovered that. <laughs> um, the screen is that last one right up here, the show hide screen, if you want to try that one. There you go, yeah, there you go. Click that and see, and there's the screen. Mm -hmm. And you can pull it down from the top or you can pull it from the sides. You have to just grab it and pull it down. There you go. And then you can pull it to the left, say, or to the right. Oh, looks like you grabbed one of the objects. It's funny doing this on a computer because um, I'm always doing this at the smart board. That's what's happening. So if, if we want, we can um, fill that screen. There we go. All right. Louisa, have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so I've, I've gone way over my time. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to show you um, this really quickly. I'm going to stop the remote control here. Um, and I want to show you really quickly what... Um, Get this down here. Um, just kind of the things. I'm going to put this in the same folder with everything else, and I'll send you guys an email about this. And um, all right, um, this is another feature. This shows how I've used the little fade in to make something. See how I can control those little pieces there. Um, here's an example of just a really elaborate drawing that I've done um, with this. These are all kinds of diagrams that I use in my physics teaching. Here's a more elaborate diagram. Um, I've been able to record my movements on the screen, so rather than tapping on the screen, I can just have things fade in. And you can see how I'm allowing different pieces to come in at different times. I can control that timing. And so I can stop and, and check in with the students and just check in for um, things. This is a drawing that um, several students collaborated on. You can see their, their writing on there. Um, and it's set up so that I can talk about the direction of forces when something is on a ramp. The student who drew the pink elephant was particularly proud of it. <laughs> and then this probably, um, this is actually from a video and I can, I have this annotated on top of a video, but for this, for the purposes of this, I did it on top of an image. And so here's an example again of the kind of thing that I can have them do. This is an actual lightning bolt. Um, and so I begin putting information in there concerning the physics of the lightning here. Um, and these are things I just pull in and then I talk about it a little bit and I add another piece, get to talk about it again a little bit. There's a couple more pieces that are gonna come in. And so the whole thing has been fully annotated now at this point. And I can control when that comes in so I can you know, stop and talk about each of these pieces as they happen. And to do this on top of a video is really cool. <laughs> and it's just a very, very nice thing. Um, can I ask if anyone has any questions about any of this? Because I've actually shown you what I wanted to show you. questions but that was really neat I like the, the diagram you did with the lightning bolt yeah that was that that took a lot of work um, but it came out great I was really happy with it <laughs> and the students of course loved yeah I bet that took a while to put yeah. that together anyway um, I also want to tell you you can um, the smart notebook software can go on any machine you don't need a smart board to go with it 
Um, you can make this stuff and, and, and use it um, without a smart board. It's easier with it, but you can do it without. Um, if you get the 90-day trial, there is a little trick for turning it into a full-service program. It eliminates the trial and makes it be you know, a permanent um, installation on your machine. And it involves having a, a, a smart board available so you can lift its serial number off. I'll leave instructions for that and the collection of materials that I'll have on Google Drive. And I'll send you guys all an invitation to, um, to view all that on Google Drive. So. Thanks for sharing, Bill. So, hey, I, hope, Bill. so I hope, yeah, I, I, I hope that was all uh, useful and interesting to see. And I'm sorry for all the glitches, but I guess that's part of the, uh, the point of this, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is to uh, get rid of the glitches and deal with them. Anyway, thank you very much, guys, for coming by. Thank you. Thank you.